In this step-by-step -step guide, I'm going to present three examples of, of how to run the independent samples t-test in JASP. So let's start with opening the data. So show you, you go to the three lines here, open, and you go to computer and browse, and you locate the, the folder in which your file is and then you open that file. I'm going to go to recent files. I've got the barley type data that um, I'm going to use. So this is the example I explained in the masterclass that William Gossett was conducting with barley. So here we've got a eight um, plants of barley and then the quality some measure of quality as the dependent variable. So this is barley type, is the independent variable. Quality is the dependent variable. We've got eight measurements for type A, barley type A, and eight measurements of barley type B. So um, these are two different groups. So the, the measurements are independent. So the all these eight measurements are in eight plants, and these eight measurements are different eight plants. So it is a it is an independent sample. So these samples are not associated. Then the um, the second important thing is: is this an experiment? Well, we didn't mention whether the plants were randomly, the seeds uh, were randomly allocated to pots. Um, so if, if that didn't happen, then it wasn't an experiment. If it happens, then it's an experiment. Random allocation of, of uh, participants or units of analysis to the group, to the treatment that will receive, that makes an experiment. And the other thing is, in a typical experiment, we've got a control group and an experimental group, but that's not a requirement of an experiment. So in this case, we don't have control and experimental. We've got two different types, but it could be an experiment without control group and experimental group. What makes an experiment an experiment is the random allocation of participants or units of analysis to groups or treatments or conditions. Okay, so we do first descriptives. We can do descriptives when we, in the t-test um, menu as well, but we've got more more options in in these descriptives uh, menu. So the variables um, uh, is the quality of barley that we are going to measure there, and and the split tells us uh, how that the all the values in in quality of barley will be split and they will be split based on the barley type. So now we've got, so actually I'm going to show you again. So here we've got a um, the uh, quality, we've got valid cases 16, missing 0, the mean of that variable, the standard deviation, minimum value, maximum value. If you go to statistics here we can add more, like for example we can want the variance. Um, and the range, which is the, the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value. Okay, so uh, we can have uh, the median as well, and the sum. Okay, so, but then when we split by barley, then we are going to have all the same statistics, but split by group. So we've got statistics for the group A and statistics for group B. So instead of having 16, now we've got 8 and 8 because they were split. And we've got the mean for group A is 26.87, the mean for B is 13.62, and uh, standard deviation 3.5 and 3.9. Okay, so these are the statistics um, descriptive statistics. Now we can use plots. In uh, plots, we can use uh, the box plots to um, have 
a the, the descriptives over there. Um, I like to have the jitter element that shows each observation. And so I remove box plot so you can see all the all the observations in each group. And if I use the one of these two elements, I prefer the violin element. But sometimes nothing it's it's better. Okay, let's go to the actual t test. So we go to t test here, classical, and then we choose independent samples t test. So we do the same as before. We could the variable quality is the dependent variable goes here, and the independent variable goes as grouping variable. Now what we have here is a test. Uh, we have three options, and we we talked about the student t test, so that's the one we are going to use. Um, so we've got here uh, the the value for the t test is seven point zero six nine. Degrees of freedom of the distribution is fourteen, and the p value it's a uh, a very small value. So we've got e negative six. So that means that this full stop has to be has to move six places to the left. So we've got a number zero point five zeros and five five six. So a very low p value. That means that we reject the null hypothesis. So other things that we can look at here. Well, here the alternative hypothesis is that the group one is different than the group two. We didn't have any theory or justification to say that one would be higher than the other. So when you don't have that, then it has to be a um, non-directional hypo alternative hypothesis. For location parameter, we can add confidence interval. So basically it gives us um, the mean difference, which is the difference between the two groups. Uh, the standard error of the difference, so that's uh, the standard, sorry, the sampling distribution of the mean difference, and that would be the standard error, or sorry, the standard deviation of that sampling distribution, which we call standard error, and here is standard error of the mean difference. And then a 95% confidence interval that is calculated using the standard error, and, and this is a uh, so the, the interval is centered in 13.25, the lower bound is 9.23, and the upper bound 17.27. And uh, effect size, I haven't explained this before, but it's a, a measure of, um, of the, the mean difference, but divided by some standard deviation, so it makes this uh, value um, measureless so it, it is um, we can compare these to other other studies so 3.53 it means that it the difference between these two groups is 3.5 standard deviations we can have some descriptives that we had before the mean standard deviation and standard error and we can have a descriptive plot which in this case would be uh, the dots show the means of the two groups and the bars indicate the 95% uh, confidence interval for each of the means. Let's go to the second example. And we call, we call open, computer, browse, but I've got I've got it here. So in this um, in this case, we've got a, a data set. Uh, in this column, we've got participants. V1 just gives the number. Uh, so it's a repetition. So we've got 60, 60 participants, and they are divided into two groups, uh, 30 children and 30 adults. And here we've got in DV some measurement. Let's say working memory capacity, but it could be any other any other 
measure. Is this an experiment? No, it's not an experiment because we cannot assign participants to the two groups randomly. We cannot take a participant and say, okay, we randomly assign you to the group of children. No, if it is an adult, we cannot do that. Same, same the other way around. If it is a child, we cannot assign assign them to the to the adults group. So this is this is a it's not an experimental design. Sometimes um, designs that um, don't meet this requirement, but they have other types of control. They call pseudo experimental designs. But this technically is not an experimental design. So let's go quickly to descriptives. Um, we've got the dependent variable as dependent variable and group as split. So we've got here the data valid 30 in each group, mean 7.56 in adults and children 6.76, standard deviation 1.67 in adults and 1.75 in children. Uh, we can do plots, uh, box plots, and jitter element to see the data. Um, let's do the violin element. Well, quite close. We visually we, we cannot say whether they're going to be different or not. So that's that's one is very useful to do the analysis. Okay, so let's go to the t-test, independent samples t-test. We put variables dv over there, group in the grouping variable, and then again the alternative hypothesis let's leave it as um, as non-directional because we don't know whether we don't have a theory to say that adults will have a higher or lower working memory capacity than children so we leave it there and the um, the t test is 1.806 with 58 degrees of freedom, so we've got 60 observations, and we we subtract two from 60 is 58, and the p-value is larger than 0 0.05, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we retain it, we maintain it. We cannot say that we that we prove the null hypothesis. That's not allowed in this null hypothesis significance testing approach. We can only say that we do not reject it. And we can do the location parameter, uh, the mean difference, the standard error of the difference, the confidence interval. Um, as you can see, the confidence interval goes from a negative 0.087 to 1.687. So the mean difference in how this interval includes zero and that's related to the p-value. So if the p-value is lower than 0 0.05, the 95% confidence interval will not include zero in, in the possible values. Okay, let's go to the third example. Here I do have an experiment. I've got a control group and an experimental group, and I assign participants to the control group and to the experimental group in a random fashion. So it's random allocation to, of participants to groups that makes the study an experimental design. So I've got 40 participants in the control group and 40 participants in the experimental group and have some measurement of, let's say I, I ask them to, to perform a task to which a maximum performance of 200 and these are the, the values. So possible values 0 to 200 and here are the results. So quickly descriptives, we go to uh, dependent variable goes there, group is the split and we've got the data here 102.45 for the control group, 146.72 to the experimental group and standard deviation 9.629 for the control and 16.059, so a huge difference in the, the standard deviations there. Um, if we do plots, uh, the box plots, and just do violin and jitter element, uh, we've got here 
and even though the experimental group there is a huge um, variability it looks like there's gonna be a significant difference here and uh, so let's go to the t-test independent samples t-test group goes as a grouping variable dv is the is the dependent variable that we are going to use and here we do have directional hypothesis we are testing these because we believe that the experimental group will produce um, an improvement in this in this performance measure so it, this could be this could be that that the control group was assigned to a passive task and the experimental group to a some training that um, we want to test whether that training improves performance in some cases we have active control groups that they do a task but it's not the same as that the one that the experimental group is doing so we train the experimental group in, in the in the in using a method that we want and the other the control group is, is, spends the same hours with the researchers that are doing the training, but they do something else. So there, here we do have the hypothesis that the experimental group will be uh, will have higher performance than the control group. So we need to indicate um, a one of the. Um, one of the directional hypotheses is group one is larger we expect larger higher performance than group two or group one lower performance than group two well what's group one and group two well we need to you need to look at the data so let's go and see the data so here we've got group one is control because we put it first and experimental will be the second so let's return to the t test dependent sample t-test well this is actually a new analysis I, I, I just returned to the one that I was working with um, so it's actually this one so um, group one is the control and so basically the alternative hypothesis that we want to test is that group one is lower than group two so it should be this one and we've got here the result so what's the difference what changes is the p-value because the p-value if we have a directional hypothesis we are going to look at one tail only of the sampling distribution of the the t distribution so when we do a directional hypothesis we look at only one side of the t distribution so when we say the p-value is the value, the probability of obtaining the, the, the t-score in this case in our sample, in that sampling distribution, but we say always, or a more extreme score. So when we say with a more extreme score, in when we have a directional hypothesis, then we look at only one side. So in this case, the t-score is minus 14.8, then we are looking at scores lower than minus 14.8 but when we have a non-directional then we look at two uh, the two sides so remember here we've got the p-values 1.162 and then um, this is the uh, scientific notation e to the minus 24 and my, so that indicates that we need to to move this um, full stop um, 24 spaces to the places to the left so when we put the non-directional that will change so it's now is 2.324 e uh, minus 24 so we still is move um, 24 places the full stop but it changed the value 232 instead of 1 um, so I do it again we had 1 1 1 1.162 and now is 2.32 in this case there is no difference uh, it would be okay 
but sometimes when the p-value is close to 0 0.05, what what you choose as alternative hypothesis makes a difference, a huge difference in the p-value, whether the result is significant or not. And so that's why sometimes uh, it is recommended to always always use the non-directional hypothesis. But this is incorrect. What is inc what is correct is to if you have a a directional hypothesis, you use the one tail t test. But you need to be honest, and you need to use that um, hypothesis should be there and justified before running the experiment, not after you see the data. So that's the, the important um, message. Now, you can see here that it tells us that, that uh, Levine's test is significant, uh, is significant it's suggesting a violation of the equal variance assumption. So basically, this, this, um, this t-test assumes that these uh, samples come from uh, a, a, the t-score it, uh, the distribution assumes that the the two samples or or, or subpopulations from which the sampling distribution of the, of the T is generated is they, they have the same uh, standard deviation and these suggest they don't. So what do we do? Well, in this case with with this uh, huge difference in the p-value, I, I wouldn't do anything um, but uh, because it, it will the result will be the same but one very simple solution to this problem is to use the Welsh t-test instead of the student t-test so basically the Welsh t-test has different assumptions um, it doesn't have the problem of, of uh, div not that the that standard deviations are different it does something funny with the degrees of freedom uh, so there is a formula, very different formula, to calculate the degrees of freedom, and it comes with a, a, a decimal. So you don't have to worry about that, but it, it runs the t-test in a similar way than the student t-test, uh, but the p-value would be different. Um, so that's an option when you, uh, when you don't meet the assumption of the test.